A man found a Bible from 1775 and made some shocking and startling discoveries when reading it. Check this out. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm not that much of a religious person, but I was reading a Bible from 1775 today, and guess what I found out? That, two things really, there is a 13th month, and the 13th month's name was Vader. Number two thing that I found out was the fact that the one who they called Jesus did not die on the 20th, I'm sorry, was not born on the 25th. He was born on April the 1st. Now, fast forward to nowadays, what do they call April 1st? April Fool's Day. Now, who do you think are they calling the fool? The people who don't know that this is the day that their um, proclaimed savior was born on. Take that and run with it. Love y'all. Pretty interesting, right? Now, in regards to there being a 13th month and the name of that month, I don't know. I have no knowledge of that. But what I do know is our current Gregorian calendar is based in Roman paganism and it is a perversion of God's Hebrew and biblical calendar. But when it comes to Jesus's birth not taking place on December 25th, there has been plenty of evidence, historical and biblical, to back up this fact. But why would it be on April 1st out of all days? I think Jonathan Kahn did an excellent job in explaining this in a recent interview that he did. Check this out. Was Jesus born on December 25th? No. First of all, in first clue, Luke 2, it says, And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Mm -hmm. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. That alone is a clue right there. The rabbis say in the Talmud that shepherds would only be out in the fields around March... Um, until the next rainy season. If you've been to Israel in the I winter, <laughs> it does get, I've been there when there's been snow. They're not just keeping their sheep in the pens. They're out in the fields and at night, which is very strange. Why would they be out in the fields at night? So there is one time of the year that shepherds would especially be out with their flocks at night. Only one, that's in the springtime. Why are they watching their flocks at all hours? Because shepherds during one particular time do that. It's when the sheep's give, sheep give birth to lambs in that net, the lambing season that's the only time that's where they're watching at any time of day any time of night they're watching for any birth that's the only time and when would that happen lambs are only <laughs> born at a certain time of the year not like us they can only be born at a certain season lambs are born in the springtime it could start as early as as february but it really would go march april that's the center that's the hebrew month of nisan nisan is that month so it's what a perfect thing to begin with because Jesus is the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. So why would God have, who would he have to greet the birth? Oh. Shepherds who oh. are watching for the birth of the Lamb. So here that's so perfect of God. Oh, Messiah amazing. is the Lamb of God and they're there greeting. That's what they're doing. Every day, every time he fulfills a holy day, he doesn't just fulfill the time. It, the theme of that day, he fulfills it. For instance, Passover, he dies as the Passover Lamb first fruits he rises so everything has to do with that is there any day on the hebrew calendar that would match up with birth new beginning new everything there is one day and it happens to be a nissan and the one day is nissan one which is the very beginning of the hebrew year the very day that begins everything and so and this is the day that it's the very it's the new it's the real new year though most most Jewish people think Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, is Rosh Hashanah. It's not. The new the real new year of God is Nisan 1. Now the thing about Nisan 1 is you don't have to be in Jerusalem. There's no command to be in Jerusalem, yet it's a holy day, so uh -huh. Joseph could be there at that time. Uh -huh. And it's also it's the think about this. It's the day it's the day that begins the calendar. It it changes the calendar. The, the old calendar is gone, the new calendar begins. What does Messiah's birth do when he comes to, to this world? He changes the calendar. Yeah. The whole calendar right. is changed BC AD, and there's one one day in the Hebrew calendar that matches that, and that's Nisan one. It's the calendar changer. But now we're gonna even go deeper. We're gonna go to the moon now. Okay, oh. we go for the moon. <laughs> anyway, but this is not and I want to tell you, as we're doing this, it's there's all sorts of things we're that touch on a million other things, so it's good. The mystery of the moon. And that is the Hebrew calendar is based on the moon, you know, and that's where we get the word month, month, month. So the moon. And so when Jesus died, and people don't realize this, he died at the full moon. When he died, it was a full moon. Why? Every Hebrew month begins with a new moon, starts. Right. 
It reaches its peak at the full moon. That's what it's called. The month is in its fullness. That's right in the middle. Jesus died on the Nisan 1415, the middle, that's Passover. That's when the, the moon had to be full that day, had to be full. And as a symbol, Nisan means the beginning. It's the month that means the beginning. The full moon means the, it's, the, it's the fulfillment of this beginning, this first coming. It's at the, f the fullness of it. So his whole life is leading up to this, new, this, this fullness, this moon. And so when would his life begin? If it, if it fulfills at the full moon of Nisan, means the month of the beginning, first coming, it would begin on the new moon of, that, of Nisan, the very beginning, of the, and that's Nisan 1. So his whole month, there's a moon mystery behind this whole thing too. Every Hebrew calendar, every year. So there it is. God's feast days in the Old Testament are so significant because they are all types and shadows pointing to Jesus and revealing hidden things about Jesus. So if we throw it out, we're throwing out Jesus himself, which said that he is the law of Moses. And this is a perfect example of why we need to understand the Old Testament and why God tells us to keep his feast, not Jewish feast, but his feast forever. I pray this message blesses you. Shalom and see you next time.